Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Make. This is my show where I put something together, uh, build something, do something, convert something, and chat about it while I do it. Um, today we're taking a look at Adeptus Sauritas, the uh, new Army Battle Walks from Games Workshop. Apparently sold out everywhere in minutes. Just gone. So, uh, yeah, I got, some, I got some flack for doing this review on the weekend, um, and I'm actually like... It's kind of knocked my window of the sales being excited about this because um, folks were just mad that I had one. And I don't really know what to say about that except for, I guess next time I just don't do a review. Like, I don't I don't know what the answer is. Uh, but today I'm going to put it together because people want to see it put together um, and go through the, the little like contents thing here um, and uh, just jump in and, and show you the bits. So these are all... Um, Sort of like monopose single build star set minis, uh, starting with the Canonus, which was already available, all the way through to the sisters, the Arcoflagellants, the um, Seraphim, and the Pennant Engine. Uh, people were also mad that I didn't know that that they were that they were monopose, but I'll, I'll be like, I'll be super honest. I don't read anything on Warhammer community for the most part. Um, I don't read news updates. I don't read rumor mill stuff. Um, for me, when things are out is when I care about them. So for instance, I just got a, uh, I just got like a, a whole bunch of DMs over the weekend, uh, blowing up my inbox about the announcement that there's going to be a Warhammer Old World thing from Forge World, that they're doing a Horse Heresy version of the Old World. And, uh, all of the replies I sent were just the link to my hype train podcast that I did. <laughs> Cause like if it's two or three years off, it's just not real. It's like, it's a marketing, it's a marketing kickoff, which is cool and stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it, it would, lots of, lots of new things coming out. Um, and this of course being the one that sold out super fast, it sounds like this is going to become available in 2020. Uh, and yeah, I didn't. I, di I didn't know a lot about it. I think one of the reasons it's important for me to not know a lot about stuff before I handle it, open it, and look at it is that you get a more you get a more honest reaction because I don't have like a preconceived notion. Actually, I think, I think that actually hurt my review of Warcry, um, or at least it hurt Owen's review of Warcry because he was expecting it to be one thing, I think, when he opened it, and that gave him an emotional reaction. And that's, that's not good or bad for the review's sake, but it, it certainly lessened his enjoyment when he thought from the from like the hype and the previews and the, the things that were coming out that it was going to be one thing and it was kind of another and it's interesting because there's a this month in white dwarf there's a really interesting article i don't ever buy white dwarf again uh but i bought white dwarf this month because whenever it comes with free cards for games i buy it and had titanicus cards um had a cool like um uh like uh, hunter hunted uh, what's it called alpha or something like that version of um of uh, uh, Shades Bar to play. I knew <laughs> the NAF Fun Police card for Blood Bowl, which I thought was hilarious. And then uh, uh, there was a new card for Aeronautica. So I picked it up because, like, if it's got expansions for the games, it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab it just to have those expansions because you'll lose, you will never get them otherwise. Uh, and um, lo and behold, there was an article by Jervis, which I loved about Warcry. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking for, like, some designer's notes and some background info on how the game was made, and this is apparently written before it came out, too, so it's interesting because. They don't really know how it's been received when they write all this stuff. They just know what they've done and what they put in to make it. It's a really interesting read. I thought it was neat, so uh, it worth a worth a check out too. Um, but obviously, tons of like tons of marketing behind this this box set, uh, and so I think expectations are really high. And of course, whenever there's a splash like this, because this isn't this isn't like the release. This is the pre pre release. This is like people getting stuff at Gen Con. This happens in other game systems too. Like you'll see. Um, Right now, for Sung of Ice and Fire, the Baratheon starter set was released at Gen Con back in August. So, like, middle of August to now, this is August, September, October, sorry, September, October, November. So, we're three months out from the pre release for Baratheons. There's people playing them and stuff, but that box set's still not out yet. There's people that don't have it, and like, you can't really use them in tournaments. And there's people that are mad they didn't get one because they sold out literally in the first day, and they're popping up on eBay for like crazy money and stuff. This is kind of like a workshop version of that, and I think it, it's kind of rubbed salt in the wounds too, and like a lot of these that got scabbed like really fast, it almost feels like there was some kind of like, the folks that use like that sniper stuff, that like web browser stuff to like instantly form fill and stuff to grab them, because they showed up on eBay almost immediately, and that's a bummer. Like that's, I can totally understand how that's, if you've been saving up your shekels, been really excited about this release, been following like all of the, um, 
you know, the marketing behind it basically. It's been going on since, so, so I, I looked back into it. It's been going on, the marketing for this game has been going on since uh, March of 2018. So two years of marketing for this almost, and a little bit of like hints at it beforehand, which is like the beginning, because it was 2017, second edition, or eighth edition 40K came out, and they announced the story as the Adepticon after that, I think at the preview. And um, yeah, people like, people have been losing their minds ever since, because it's basically been like a third wheel in their marketing engine at Workshop, where they had like their own Battle Sister bulletin, people were talking about it, people, it's like, it's been literally its own little like side marketing plan this whole time. And it's funny because as this one winds down, I feel like the uh, the one, they, they started up the old rule one like right alongside it. So they kind of have that that marketing push to do alongside. Um, and it's funny because it, 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 feels, it feels like there's a void now if, if sisters have been pre-released. And of course, 2020 is like when the full release will come and I don't think they've given it a date yet or anything like that. But but now there's going to be like there's going to be less 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 like sort of like rumor milly stuff to like stir the pot with for the marketing team and so having something like this old world thing that they can occasionally tease or do a render for or whatever it just feels like a smart play so this canvas is pretty cool uh we've got a bus blade somebody pointed out actually that it doesn't look like it's actually legal to make because it has a plasma pistol a bus blade and a um uh, like an icon of rana command or whatever um, and that does not appear to be a legal configuration in the rules, which I think is hilarious. I'm sure that'll get FAQ'd. They never make a miniature you can't use the rules for, because um, yeah, you can see your plasma pistol right here on the frame. And I hadn't really noticed it, because it just has like, kind of, it's like, it, it's just kind of like peeking out on the side, but it's clearly there. Like now that I've got it in pieces, I can clearly see it. And it doesn't seem like it's maybe completely illegal in the rules for the game. So, meh. I mean, I guess it's legal if you just don't use the staff. Because I would use this as a blast blade because the blast blade is just better. It's a better power sword. But I thought that was funny. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, it bums me out when people get mad about this stuff because I'm just trying to I'm just trying to check things out, make a review, and you know, like I don't because I don't have any prior knowledge. I don't. I, I guess I don't. I'm not really prepared for how emotionally invested people were. Um, I got blasted all weekend for for even just doing the review, not for how the review was or any things I said. It was just like. People were mad because they hadn't been able to get a copy, and then I had a copy and I was reviewing it, and I, I clearly I wasn't, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be as emotionally invested in it, because, I mean, I love my Order of the Urgent Shroud, I played Sisters all through um, third and fourth edition 40K, uh, but I haven't been like, Jones into a Sisters army. Mostly because I have like probably 2,000 points of unbuilt metal sisters sitting in the back here that like I could just do it, if I, if I felt the urge to make a Sisters army, I could. A lot of people can't do that because they don't have you know, an old collection that, you know, they can strip and repaint or just like model sit on the sides or whatever. And I also have all the, all the Sisters minis that I picked up in 2004, I think, when the Witch Hunters Codex came out. Because 2004 was when, it was 2003 or 2004? I think it's 2004. But the Witch Hunters got, got miniatures. That's, that's the last time they got an update, basically. So 15 years ago is when um, the last, like, line of Sisters miniatures came out. And uh, obviously, for, some, for most people, that's, that's, that could be a lifetime for some of the people watching this. 15 years is, uh, not my whole life, but, but not um, insignificant for most people. It's a serious amount of time. Uh, so this front piece goes on. And, oh, that's a bit gappy. I'm not super sure how happy I am about that. That doesn't fit super well. Oh, that's not great. That kind of causes a bit of distance in between. Just not the best fitting piece. It doesn't go perfectly. I'm going to have to give it some pressure. Or get some mini clamps. Actually, even mini clamps aren't going to really do that. The, so you can see here, there's there's a gap on the side, and I don't know if it's the way I have the arms. I don't think it's the way I have the arms posed. No, nope, because that's, that's fit in properly. That's also fit in properly. It's just not perfect. Basically, it's one of those, if you push one side, actually, it's not even that. So the shoulders are connecting perfectly. The back and the front piece aren't. Weird. So you can see there's a gap along here where it's tilted forward a little bit. I can't really get that to close. I'll put some more glue in there, I guess. See if I can get it. See if I can just hold it for a second, get it to weld. So there's not too big a gap. Once again, I'm using um, to me a uh, uh, model cement. A lot of people. A lot of people. I, I gave a shout out to it when I was doing Necromunda, one of these, and a lot of people were like, uh, "Actually, uh, Tester's Model Master is the greatest glue of all time." And I don't mind Tester's Model Master. I like the one with the metal, the metal applicator. It's pretty cool. 
Um, you can use a lighter to clear the metal applicator if you want. It's, it's a little bit dangerous. Those fumes are not good for you if you do that, but um, it's, a, it's also a quality glue. And a lot in the US, especially Tester's Model Master is probably way more available. Okay, I've got that to, I get this to fill pretty well. You just gotta be careful with how you apply pressure to that. It needs to sit forward a little bit. So when you pinch, you wanna pinch it at the top to get that to seal properly. And it looks like it's welded okay. Oof, that was frightening for a second there. I thought my canister was gonna have a big gappy, gappy gorget, I guess, whatever that thing is around her head. I do wish, because this is this is the one that's probably, it's a line model already. So I was kind of hoping that it would have like at least an alternate head or something like that, like a bear head, but we've just got the one head in here. The one can in its head with her, she got like this sweet like iron circlet and stuff. I'm tempted to do Order of the Arches Shroud again. Now, especially that I know that their background is they've basically like been all but wiped out. No one really knows what they're doing. Cause I love, I love, I love the stories where I can write my own kind of like my own little like part of the world into it. So I think that might actually be what I end up doing. And I have a bunch of Inquisition stuff that I might do. Cause the other reason I picked up the uh, Inquisition stuff, a lot of people were disappointed by it from the comments I've been reading online, but like, I think it's cool. There's new Inquisition stuff. They got Warlord traits. They got some neat stuff. I mean, it was never really going to be a standalone army. It's a thing you kind of like put into other armies to make it cool. The Inquisition shouldn't be a thing that, you know, you can, you can take to war. It should be commandeering other things to take to war. In my personal opinion, if we, people are free to disagree with me, I might be wrong, but um, they come in and they're kind of like the CIA of the Imperium. They requisition what they need to get the job done. And they disappear. And the, the military doesn't like them very much. There we go. So there's my cannon, it's all finished. You can see here, all put together. I managed to get those gaps to fill pretty nicely. I'll shave, I'll let them cure a little bit before I shave them down or just put some more glue in there. But she's all finished. Let's take a look at what's next. It looks like we're on to a scissor spear, sweet. Um, so A89, 88, 90, 92. And are you the big frame A? Oops, I got that upside down. The big frame is, I'm looking for, okay, so it's A. This is the, this is A. So B, B of the two small frames is the big frame, which would stand to make, that would stand to reason because whenever you're doing the um, character stuff, it'll be one of, all the duplicates will probably be on B. I think there's a, a separate or single, like probably like a different head, but the same model twice. We'll probably be on that one right there. So I'm looking for 89 and 88. Well, conveniently there's 89. And all these big fools on 32s. Not on 25s anymore, so I'm actually glad that my uh, sister army was sitting there stripping in a bucket because it's um, it's uh, those 88 right there. It's gonna it would all have to be rebased anyway, and I mean it was painted like a bajillion years ago, and some of it was actually my buddy Drew's um, old sister's army that was in cases that he got rid of, and I I scratched up because I didn't want it to go in the garbage. Uh, 90 and 92. Uh, there's never any rhyme for the numbers go because I also kind of go where it fits and I'm always like a bit just lost look it's like a where's Waldo 90 92 there's 93 94 88 89 what where are these pieces so it's a chainsaw that's uh, the problem is there's eviscerators on here too there's 90 and then 92 is ahead there's 92 right there I should actually look for what the piece looks like and not just the number but I'm always looking for the number there's 92 that's a cool head. I like that head a lot. And now looking at these heads, they are all in the same, like if you wanted to customize these a bit, for the most part, the scissors ones are all in the same sort of like, like square peg. You could definitely, you could definitely swap the heads around if you want to. They're not, they're not fitted basically to a single miniature. They're probably pegged to look the way that they should be looking as far as the model goes. But I don't think they're, um, there's nothing like that they wouldn't fit into each other's, uh, power armor and nice clean cat I mean this is obviously a purpose-built frame for this starter set in this bo army box uh, so nice clean casts nice new steel molds let's just clean off the shoes there and I'm gonna try and get like one of each miniature painted and like and all the are built and all of the um, the big stuff so I can do like some test painting. I'm not gonna try and just power through all this right now. I'm not gonna be watching me build 25 miniatures. Oh, they are pretty quick to build, but this will give us an idea of how each of them goes together. I won't do like the duplicates. And then I can test some painting. Although, or, or the Arch Shred is like a super easy paint scheme. It's mostly just metallics, um, which means I can airbrush those on and then uh, go in and paint details afterwards. I'll probably do the Arco Flagellants and the, um, 
the repents just slightly differently though because they're all they're all uh, skin tone so I might do them with um, contrast paint base coats and then go through and just do the details afterwards especially the arco flagellants or the contrast paints I because there's so many cool contrast paint colors I can pick like a not kind of human skin tony one for them because they're all sort of like rotting they all look like the dude that was uh, in the air freshener room in 7, to give you guys a movie reference. <laughs> a random movie reference. That's what I always think of when I think of Arkham Flagellants and Damon Hosts. I think of that dude that was, uh, the, the, the John, John Doe was keeping alive in the air freshener room in 7. Because he looks like an Arkham Flagellant. Actually, I imagine that's kind of what they're doing in Arkham Flagellants too. These are like penitent dudes that have been mind wiped. Alright, front and back on first, according to the rules here. Let's get some glue in there and the shoulder pads. I think it's really important you get glue on these shoulder pads because they will separate if you don't get a little bit of glue in there. And you, uh, if you just dry fit them, you're gonna get gaps. And then it's the chain sword. So a little bit of glue in there. And the head. And especially a small piece like the head, I always like to put the glue in the in the spot it's gonna sock it into, not into the, uh, the actual um, piece because then you won't get your hands gluey, get it stuck everywhere. That's, that's really nice. She's a really cool figure, actually. What's her backpack? 91. I should have looked for that first because I could have cleaned it at the same time. That's okay. We'll get her on our base. 91. I got some flash on there. I'm just going to put her slightly to one side because her bolt gun won't hang over that way. Oh, jeez. You know what, Ash? You just said you were going to put her down to dry while you... <laughs> well, you got the backpack and then immediately did the opposite of what you said. I, some people call me out for that in videos every now and again. I will say one thing and then two seconds later literally do the other thing. I'm like Rick James in, um, in that one skit in, uh, in Chappelle show. It's like, I don't put my boots on that couch. Yeah, I put my boots on that couch. <laughs> I don't know. As, as I get older, my brain stops working. And I forget what I'm doing halfway through. Makes Cassie crazy. All right, there's 91. Yeah, most of these character pieces, it looks like they're all on the, uh, they're all on this first frame. They're all on A. And we'll go through, and pro it's probably two by two for B. There's like a, there's like a box for building each miniature and like a call out for doing the alternate head or whatever. Which would make sense. Oh, it's so weird cleaning one of these backpacks in plastic. Cause like I've cleaned a million of these in metal and they're pretty much identical. Like it's it's funny it's funny how they kept the design aesthetic so similar for these. I'm really happy about it though because I'll be able to put my metal stuff next to the plastic stuff. I don't even think there's really a size discrepancy even. I think it's probably pretty much exactly the same. All right, there she is. The so sisters appear. I'm gonna make sure she doesn't fall down this time. There we go. You can see her all finished up. She's a great miniature. She's really nice actually. Really cool pose. I like the she has like the 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 almost the imperial creed like eye on her chest plate there. These are a lot less cheesecakey. Like as much as their armor is still like kind of silly looking, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like they're going to battle in like weird like armored lingerie anymore. <laughs> it looks a little more armory. All right, so the simulacrum is 94, 93. Let's find those because yeah, the battle the battle lingerie from like the uh, the original artwork in Rogue Trader was kind of the aesthetic of the original, and it's definitely less that in this. I have seen no tactical heels yet, which is pretty cool. They're actually wearing like boots. Uh, 94, 93. It's funny, one of my favorite bits of writing for Battle Sisters is um, a Space Wolf novel, actually. Oh, which one was it? It's a Chris Rate one. It's the same one where the, the, the Space Wolf from the Death Watch comes back. And like he's not right. <laughs> the rest of the space folks are like, there's something wrong with you. And it's because he no longer has like faith in the Imperium or faith in like the fact that everything's gonna work out. He's not brave. Well, he's not, not brave anymore, but he's like his like his like bravado is all shaken because he's um been to the edge of the galaxy with the Order of Xenos and seen the fact that like the Tyranids are just this unstoppable like there's no way of stopping them, you're just burning everything in their way to try and slow them down. Uh, but there's a battle sister convent on the planet that they're they're trying to like like rescue sort of. And there's like an old like uh, canoness and her bodyguard trying to take back a shrine. I think it's take back a shrine. I can't remember the exact story. That's a really good book because it touches on a whole bunch of different different topics. It's like my it's like three of my favorite armies in one spot: the Death Watch, the Space Wolves, and um, the Battle Sisters all in one go. It's, uh, something battle not Battle Fenris, uh, spa not Space Wolf. I can't remember what it's called. Someone in the comments will get it. It's a Chris Rate book, but it's a good one. 
Uh, I'm sure someone in the comments will be shouting at the screen right now and then we'll, we'll post it angrily. But I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Uh, there's 96. I think that's all the pieces. I gotta get the simulacrum out. I found the backpack. I did find the backpack. So it's just the simulacrum, which is... And the head, which is 98. Did I get the head? I didn't get the head yet. 98. For the heads. Oh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Ooh, side profile. Because this one's got its helmet down. And then, uh, this guy right here. The big open shrine on a stick. Which actually looks a lot like the Metal Imperial Shrine that came with the original Army Deal, which is pretty cool. It's funny, I found a bunch of emulators and, uh, and exorcists, but the emulators and exorcists I found are all from Mark I Rhinos. <laughs> They're all from like original Rhinos, and like, they are, they are wicked small and all metal. Alright, that's all done. Let's clean you off with the body first. And I also found a bunch of my Fratteris Militia. Which is funny because the Frost Militia haven't existed in forever, but they're basically like kind of an illegal armed force that would still like volunteer to fight with the sisters. Wherever they go, basically, they're like um like partisans almost, like the local the local like fanatics or local like devout of the um ecclesiarchy that'll like pick up pick up arms, but they're not supposed to because the the um the age of apostasy ends basically with like this decree that the the ecclesiarchy will never have men in arms men under arms. And of course, you know, being being literal rules lawyers, that means the daughters of the emperor become the, the sororitas and it's okay. Because they read everything exactly. Rules as written. The Imperium, the Imperium is only rules as written. Never rules as intended. <laughs> so they can still have like a, a minor armed force, except not uh, not like their own military that's like standing. And so the Fire Militia kind of like are just like a volunteer, like if like something goes horribly wrong, but they have to break up afterwards because if the rest of the Minister finds that it's happening, they'll get mad. They'll be they'll be worried. And the other half was Redemptionist. I really hope when this codex, either when this codex comes out, or when Necromunda finally gets the Redemptionist, they add the Redemptionist in as an add-on uh, for this. I was actually really surprised the Cotter Gangers didn't get used as like a cult troop or Fratters militia like like proxy like stand-in, because it would have been cool to have like some of like just the, the freakiest. Uh, Ministorum guys like show up and be able to like bodyguard the priests because right now there's really nothing to like to hang out with all the Ministorum characters like the priests, the preachers, the missionaries, and they got rid of Uri Jacobus too. So it's not like there's a um, there's sort of like a, 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 a like a unit to go with them, it's just like dudes hanging out with the sisters. So I kind of hope we get to see that eventually because that would be super cool if they did a uh, if they did a um like a tie-in with Necromunda and just any of the Imperial Cultists because in, in the last time I was playing Sisters which is in 3rd and 4th edition you can take Redemptionists as your kind of your mute screen and they got a lot of work done back then just with the Acts of Faith that you could do before but I mean obviously the key here is that you have a you have an infantry choice that isn't just Battle Sisters isn't just folks in power armor you can have some some like um, sizable units like camp objectives and get stuff done and they all carried flamethrowers, so it doesn't matter what your stats are when you have flamethrowers in 40k. <laughs> Point flamethrower, make things dead. Which is pretty sweet. Mm, that's pretty clean. Yep. That's what you got. Get your face. And once again, I want that to be... Is this the same body? I think it might be the same body. No, she's not staying on tactical junk. Never mind. She's not staying on rocks this time. It's close to the same pose. Yeah, it's it's really close to the same pose actually, but you can see there's a lot less detail on her. She doesn't have all this kind of sister spear, like cool cool extra cool belt buckles. But the the tilt of the body, it looks like it's made on the same digital maquette, which means that like the underlying digital dolly is the same. Um and that one's just had some slight adjust adjustments made to make it more superior y. More superior -y. Just making up words. <laughs> put the arms in. Put something in the gorget there for the head. I do like this helmet. That's a cool helmet. I mean, it's just the standard sister's helmet, but it's cool to see one in plastic. Because the only plastic one I've ever seen before, this is the one from the emulator um, sprue. When it first came out, the plastic emulator, we were all freaking out because it was the first plastic sister battle. Everyone was freaking out because it was the coolest thing we'd ever seen. All right, arm in here. That's cool. This one, it's funny because this one, even though it like 
it's still huge and stuff. It actually looks a bit less heavy than the one in the Codex. It's got like the giant marble like statue or whatever. Because it looks like just like a wooden box. Like this looks like maybe, I mean, they're in power armor. They can probably carry like thousands of pounds each because they're having, they have like servo assisted muscle bundles basically like carrying everything around. But that doesn't make that marble one not look crazy heavy and huge. All right, that's in there. We're gonna let you dry before I show you guys this one because obviously that's a really top heavy banner. I'm gonna let the, uh, the plastic glue cure there for a second before I show it off. We'll see what's next. What's on the next page? Uh, you are Rando Battle Sister. Is it Rando Battle Sister? Oh, Rando, oh, it's a Battle Sister with Stormbolter. <coughs> well, that makes sense because these are the unique ones. So it's Stormbolter, Flamer, because the two special weapons in the squad. And yeah, it's exactly what I thought it was. It's two times this one with different heads, 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 and that's the rest of the squad. Cool. Well, we'll just jump in and we'll do the special weapons and we'll do a couple of these sisters and see where we get to because this is actually not going that long. So just clip along pretty fast. So 107, 108, 110, 109. And they should both be on this frame. 107. There it is, 107, 108. Actually, let's move you back. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wave this around and totally crush you otherwise. Poor little battle sister with the simulacrum. The one that will probably break in my carrying case. Oh, weird. Part of the, oh, it always weirds me out. The way they section these on a digital file. It's like part of the storm bolter is just like kind of in the middle of this body. You can see here the back half of it. It's just in the middle of this body. And the other half is probably on the arm. Uh, on 109, so 109, 110. Oh, that's cool, she's got a, she has a, uh, yeah, she has extra mags on the back there, that's super cool. Big drum mags for the Storm Bolter. All right, and then 110, uh, 109 is the other, the rest of the gun. One, there it is, 109. Engine, engine, 109. On the New York Transit Line. That is an underrated hip hop album, just so you know. Wolf of Sheep's Clothing by Black Sheep is probably one of the most, should have been up there with Della Soul and Tribe Called Quest, one of the most underrated hip hop acts of the 90s. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, and then this is it, I think. Oh, no, I'm missing a head. It's the head, 111. Clip that off before I start cleaning. 111, right there. Now she got an eye patch. Well, that makes sense. Probably a lot of shrapnel flying off that heavy bolter. Might have lost an eye. Yeah, I like I like that they're not all wearing the same like Betty Rubble Bob haircut anymore. Like they've all kind of got different haircuts. Or some of like their heads shaved and stuff too. As much as like I like it was very like it was very sort of like you know John Blatch's piece of art, like iconic. Uh, and, and I think Jessica went sculpted all the original sisters. Not the 2004 release, but the um, 90s release. And so he was going off of a lot of his own sketches and John's sketches. Um, but they all had exactly the same haircut. Like everyone was literally, it was the bull on top of the head to do the bangs. And then, uh, you know, just like, like crop shorts, kind of like Bob. I like the um, I like the fact that they're all kind of like they have they have more, more individuality like they they're more characterful I think when they all have kind of like a different look kind of they all tell their own story and stuff too which is important because honestly that's like literally the only thing Space Marines have going on <laughs> is their heads and when you take the helmet off do they look do they look anything different than just a bald screaming like the grown in a vat super ubermensch. Um, and so like, I actually really like a characterful Space Marine like head. Uh, and some of my favorite like um, plastic bits of all time have just been like the random like sergeant heads and stuff. Uh, and then some of my least favorite too, like Sergeant Flat Top from the Dark, the Dark Angels frame, which is this dude with like a flat top. <laughs> just, just rocking a flat top that you could like, you could level a painting with. Uh, that's good, clean those off. Um, but so it just makes me happy that the, like, cause the, the head, the face tells a story, right? And then having like an individual sort of like look to each of them as a, as a person who's built a lot of toy soldiers, 
that makes me really happy because I, I kind of like, I, f I feel more like in connection to the miniatures when um, they've all kind of got their own little like story and, and, and background in my head. So my all-time favorite miniatures have like, they never had names. They would just be like Space Marine 1 or Space Marine 2 or whatever. But like they, they because they had like a really cool head, a really cool face or something, they've stuck it in my mind forever. Like the Space Marine Captain with the bionic leg from second edition. He has this like Jean-Luc Picard like bald head. And he's just this like grizzled old veteran captain. He's cool as hell. Really, really cool miniature. Always stuck it in my head because of how cool that, that just the, the literally the head on it was. I'm pretty sure it was a Jess Goodwin sculpt as well. Uh, you're gonna go in there. Same with the uh, the Terminator Captain from Rogue Trader, where he has this awesome gas mask. So he has this like cool gas mask, and it was the only bareheaded Terminator uh, at the time. And he was based on a piece of art actually from the Deathwing box set. But he had this awesome like rebreather mask, and so he just he looked badass. And got used in tons, even though he wasn't great. He had a power fist with like an auxiliary grenade launcher. Like he wasn't like optimized for the addition. Everybody used him because he just looked so super cool and like converted him and stuff. He got he got given a lot of lightning claws and thunder hammers and storm shields back in the day. All right, there she is. That's all done. Uh, the flamer 9900 103 10 sorry 101 102 103 9900. Oh, it's starting to pick clean now, so I'm having a hard time. Oh, uh, 98. Well, that's clearly her backpack because her backpack has flames on it. I'm pretty sure. No, it doesn't. I'm lying. 99, 100. I'm just going blind here. It's body parts. It's got to be body parts. 99, 100. There we go. 99. <laughs> Cat is 9900. Cat learned. Um, so Cat's in grade one now, and in grade one you don't just play with like the kindergarten kids. And that means she's mixing around with like older kids now on the playground. And my cat, my daughter's like super sociable. So like she will go and hang out and talk to anybody, even if they're older than her. Actually, her school is awesome because they do a lot of like school wide events. Like they do like a school wide like sports day and games and stuff. Uh, and so one of the things she learned the other day from clearly like an older kid in, in the school was uh, how to count to 100 and cheat. So she's like, Daddy, I'm gonna count to 100. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, one, two, skip a few, 99, 100. And I'm like, looked so pleased with herself. Like insufferably pleased with herself that she'd like played this trick on me. I was like, oh my god, you're gonna you're gonna you be the kid that like picks up all the all the bad tricks on the, the playground. And I had her make me laugh. Uh, I need this burned. I think it's supposed to be a not a plague bearer. I think it's supposed to be a um, pox walker. That's all burned here. What am I missing? I'm missing 102. Yeah, I'm missing the arm piece, which is right here. Uh, missing the backpack and the head. The backpack is 103 and the head is 104. 103, 104, there's 104. 104, 103. Oh, there it is, it's got flamer tanks on it. That's super cool. I like they did special backpacks for all of the, um, the special weapons and stuff. That's really neat. It's a nice touch. Uh, there we go. Let's shrink these off. And this is not a lot of points. Like this, this 25 models is, I added up, it's about 420 points. If you include the illegal tw a plasma pistol, I think it's 415 otherwise. Uh, and it's basically a patrol, right? It's a troop choice, an HQ choice. I think two elite choices. And that's really it. And a fast, because you have a Seraphim squad. No, that's really it. So you're not, it's not a huge army, right? Like it's, it's not even, it's not even, it's like half of like what could turn into a basic army. Like it's not even like a huge amount of stuff, but it's a cool collection of miniatures. I can combine it. I mean, I can easily make a battalion out of it by just grabbing another sister squad metal, converting it up. The, uh, the old pennant engines are not going to work alongside these ones though, because the old pennant engines I'm pretty sure are way bigger, like way out of scale. Because they're on like the 65s the Dreadnoughts were on and are just ginormous compared to these. I'm not super sure what I'm going to do with those. Um, and I could make Rhinos, but they're, the Rhinos are like the older Demos pattern ones. I might just make an emulator to go with them for now because I do have an old emulator. Um, which should still look okay. I need mean, next to the new ones if I decide to get new ones. This isn't going to be... I mean, mostly... I'll probably mostly put this army in Kill Team because I'm really hoping they do Kill Team rules. That was actually a question... Um, 
that popped out in the review quite a bit actually on the on the just the comments and stuff was what about kill team rules i imagine i would be really unsurprised if they didn't do kill team rules in white dwarf at some point which would mean that you'd get uh you'd probably get them in um you'd probably get them uh online for free at some point because all the free all the content that went in white dwarf for pretty much everything became free eventually like all the chaos cultists and stuff for necromunda the inf um the various Blackstone Fortress things, I think, are all PDFs you can just download now. Which is nice. I like free content. And it would be cool to play Battle Sisters in, um, in Kill Team, which is my preferred way of playing 40k anyway. Not because not because of the, the game or the rules or anything like that, but because I think it's a it's just a nice it's a nice amount of time to play a game of 40k. It doesn't grind on. You get to paint your favorite models, spend some time painting them, have a good time painting them, and then uh, and then play a satisfying game. Like, you can play a satisfying, like, the competitive format kills you, actually, I love. The, the four turn, like, you have prior uh, missions and submissions and stuff. It's, like, probably my, my favorite way of playing Kill Team. I played four, five, six games of it at uh, Adepticon this past year, and it was great. I'm, I'm definitely going to go back next year and play some Kill Team. I hope we get the awesome. <laughs> we were in, like, the. We were in the. Clearly, we're just here to have fun, a pod in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great because like we just like all of us just kind of like, joked around and dicked around for the entire thing it was a lot of fun we had a really good time i think that was one of my highlights of last year's depticon was hanging out with a bunch of like dudes who were clearly just there to have a good time and chuck dice play play four games kill team all right that's all done so it's body and then they want me to do the flamer oh and the secondary i'm gonna shoot the secondary arm first actually Oh, I didn't clean you. Badash. You were going to miss a mold line that no one would ever see. <laughs> Literally, no one's yeah, a mold line. It's like inside the body. That's okay. I would know it was there. Let's clean it anyway. That's <laughs> it's like drilling bolters. People don't really notice, but I notice. How do they shoot their guns with the, no, no barrels? All right, that's in there. Now I can put some glue on his wrist. And that's a really cool flamer. I do like that flamer a lot. Uh, oops. Oh, I have to make things line up. That's never my strong point. Um, measure once, cut twice, Ash. There we go. That's pretty much done. And then burning. Actually, let's just do the backpack on the head. Real fast, because those aren't going to fall apart at all. Because they're pegged on. Oh, I love that head. I love that head. It's got like the double the double gas mask. That's so cool. The kind of like um, Mortarian gas mask. That looks badass. That's a really cool. That's a really cool specialist. Like that flavor to it. The cool like, like gothic nozzle. Awesome. All right, I'll slow you down so you can dry. And then we'll put the... Burning Poxwalker head in here. I can't tell if it's a Poxwalker or a Beastman. I'm pretty sure it's a Poxwalker. Because it's got like weird horns and stuff. Maybe a Beastman. Or it might just be like a cast, a cast called us or something that's just like mutated and stuff. But it really looks like a Poxwalker. And it looks like it needs to kind of hang half off the base. And then we're better off putting the glue on the feet here, I think. Yep. Oh, no, you need to hang off the base even more. That was too, that wasn't even far enough. Wow, that's so that that's a good note for anybody who's gonna build this. The shoulder of that burn guy needs to be all the way to the edge, or the foot won't go down. But there we go, and we're gonna let you dry. So let's take a look at the simulacrum. Yeah, look at her. There she is, all done up. Now that she's dry, she's cured a bit. She's not too top heavy. I don't know, maybe it's just because it's made out of wood. I feel like that one's not as heavy looking, like it's kind of like overbearing looking as the um, the other one is. <clears throat> There's the storm bolter dry as well i really like her i love the eye patch that's such a cool bit and you know what because i said it because i said it now nah, i'll do it later i'm not gonna get you watch you draw bolters i'll draw it all bolters at the same time let's let her care while i do the next one let's just do one sister of the bolter jumping into b so this is frame b now yeah this is frame b now jump into b because they do the whole sister squad in one go and they're only four pieces yeah those sisters are super fast to build holy moly this is one each frame, it's four pieces. So it's 34, 35, 36, 37. 
And there's 37. And we'll just jump into the next unit type so you can see it. I'm not going to do them all. Uh, 34, 35, 36. And it's 34, 35. Yeah, it's a nice quick build. I mean, I, I like these. They've got lots of, like, character. Just having different heads. It's fine for, like, a getting started box. I get this is probably going to be, like, a start collecting box of frames. It seems like more and more of the start collectings are moving that way. It actually really looks like the Slaves of Darkness one is that way. I'm wondering if they do the Slaves of Darkness as a, a two-player starter. I'm betting that we'll see something like Feast of Bones maybe for them with a two-player starter against another two or another like another army. Who would you pair them up against though? I don't know. It's usually an existing army who hasn't had like a starter set in a long time. Or it might be close to getting oh Eidneth maybe? That'd be cool. Then it means Eidneth. Eidneth's a little like weird for Slaves of Darkness. They're like a traditional traditional like other not like a traditional pairing really. I don't know. And then 38 or 39, let's do 38. Is this a cool head? How's this head look? No, it's kind of like a standard scissors head. Got a bob haircut, got some bangs. Not, not no, like cool detail, like a gas mask or like an eye patch or something. Everybody loves an eye patch. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me so happy, like eye patches on miniatures. It's why it's why when I built um when I built Godric Ernison for the new one, I was like, what what the f happened to his eye patch? Where's his eye patch? It's literally the first thing that happens to him in, in like the first short story in Troll Slayer. On Gahamas Nacht, he fights like this horde of wolf riders that are like assaulting this village, and one of them gouges out his eye, and that's when he meets Felix Jagger, and Felix Jagger's like, dude, are you okay? And he's like, whatever. <laughs> and just like walks away. And there's always these like gross moments in all the other, other Slayer novels where he like rubs his eye socket, like just like sticks his thumb in his eye socket and like cleans it out. And Felix is just like, ugh, this dwarf doesn't care <laughs> at all. So I noticed when he didn't have an eye patch, it weirded me out. And also when I was, when I was doing all my dwarfs for um, for Skirmish, for uh, sixth edition Skirmish, I found three different uh, Gotrix. I found the like 50, the like 40 mil one, the giant one. Um, and then the two previous editions, Go Tricks, I found like the 6th edition Go Trick and the 5th edition Go Trick. And I found a 5th edition Felix, and I was like, ooh, this Felix is not good. I can't find his sword, because the sword was like a separate bit for some reason. Yeah, the Go Trick holding the, um, the troll head and the Go Trick that's uh, just like the one like holding his axe up in the air, and they both got eye patches. I wonder if they just forgot he had an eye patch. I mean, they, they can't have. They can't. There has to be a story there. Brian Blessed will explain it to me eventually in some audiobook. It'll make sense. Grampy Rabbit will tell me why. <laughs> if you look at the Grampy Rabbit reference, it's because um, Brian Blessed, for the last like three or four years, has been doing a character on Peppa Pig. And so all young parents will know who Grampy Rabbit is. Uh, but Brian Blessed also does Go Trick, which makes me laugh because I can't hear I can't hear Go Trick now without hearing Grampy Rabbit. It like, ruined it for me. Although I love Brian Blessed from Flash Garden, which is the one thing that he should be on. Uh, what was his name? Ajax, I think. All right, that's all cleaned off. Yeah, just four pieces. These are nice quick builds. And even though they just have like alternate heads. And lots of character, put some glue in there. Put the body in. Nope, you don't want to sit flat? What's going on? Why aren't you going flush? Is there a peg I'm missing? Oh, it's because you're the wrong piece. What the hell have I done? 34. You're not 34. This is like literally the wrong piece. What piece are you? Oh, you're 40. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just an idiot. This is 34. <laughs> I grabbed literally the wrong body. I thought I was grabbing the right body. Well, I guess we're building two because I've clipped the piece off now. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Oh, I'm a dumb dumb. All right, there we go. There's 34. I was like, why do you have three legs? Oh, because you're just totally wrong. And I'm an idiot. Well, let's try that again. And quickly clean the flash off of this. And then put it together. And I might actually just, yeah, I'll jump ahead to the Sir from the Arco Flagellants and stuff after this. I really want to put the pen and engine together because it's a cool mini. But it's not that big, and I kind of want to hold it and just see how actually like it's sized because I feel like it's way smaller than the old ones, which I'm pretty sure it is. 
There we go. All right. All right. There we go. That's, that's more not totally wrong. <laughs> Great job, Ash. There we go. Hey, look, look how much better that works when it's just not pants on your head stupid. And... Yeah, it goes together really nice. No issues at all. That's a great miniature. Just enough detail, like just enough kind of like 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 motion to like the the tabard and stuff there. That um, yeah, she's she's like leaning back into her gun. That's really cool, actually. It looks like it looks like the gun's kicking, and she's kind of like leaning back into it. That's really nice. Yeah, this will fall off if I show it to you right now, but I'll let it dry for a second. I'll show you the flamer one with dead Mr. Poxwalker. Yeah, it's got some heft to it. She's kind of just like stepping over Mr. Dead Poxwalker. He's pretty sweet. I'm gonna let this one dry for a bit. And, oh yeah, I gotta finish this now, don't I? 42, 43, 44, 40, 41. Ash, you numpty. Why are you so bad at this thing that you've been doing for so long? It's because I hate building miniatures. I'll be honest. I would pay monkeys to build miniatures for me. I think that'd be fantastic. It's my least favorite part of this whole hobby. And it's funny because like um, my best friend Chris, it's his favorite part. He used to get what we'd call the assembly-itis where all he would want to do is assemble miniatures. And he had these huge like piles of like un unfinished miniatures that he just, he'd assembled but not finished. Uh, I'm looking for 44, which is right here. But yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, I much rather paint miniatures than build miniatures. And it's one of the reasons why I love all the old school stuff, because the old school stuff is always like a single piece, a single piece, a single piece. 42, 43, there's 43, there's 42. And you just kind of like pop them on the base. A lot of times, I mean, and that was just a practicality back then, because if you're looking at metal miniatures, especially the sister battle, they're usually two pieces in the original, the original kits. That's because you're flat casting stuff on a spin plate. And so you didn't want it to be a lot of pieces because a lot of pieces means more vents, more more like wasted material that you gotta throw back in the pot, um, more likely to like come apart as you're pulling it out of the frame when you're banging the frame and stuff like that. So the fewer pieces it would be in, the better overall. Um, just for production, because production's faster. Because every every like two or three set, like you have to think about if your game's workshop back then and you're sculpt you're casting in a spin machine all these metal miniatures, every like two or three seconds longer it takes you to get that model out of that spin plate is costing you a ton of money. Because you're making so many of these that like to, to add like two or three seconds when you're casting thousands of miniatures is actually a lot of like man hours all of a sudden. So designing a miniature that you could you could get it relatively quickly from a, from a mold it was advantageous. It was There was a definite like uh, financial incentive to doing it that way. And so you'd get a lot of like old miniatures, like one or two pieces. Like all of the old Blood Bowl miniatures, the Gary Moly sculptures are like one piece. And they were all in like a flat cast pose, like this or like this. And that's why all the old sisters are like hugging their weapons like to their bodies. So there's no undercuts. And as usual, just backpack and sister, backpack and sister. And I have an absolute pile of them. I gotta finish stripping. Because whatever primer was on there does not want to come off. I'm trying to find a good like a good metal stripping agent. I used like chemical stripper and it didn't even dent them. Didn't even dent the, the primer and the paint that was on there. So I have to find something good for, for, for like getting a Canadian like hardware store to strip them with. Throw them in a bucket again and give them another, another like, another like maybe like day or two to get the paint off. That is just a good like, I don't want to use a wire brush because they're pewter and they might damage. I'm not sure what I'm going to use to actually like scrape the paint off. If anyone has any suggestions of a good thing to scrape paint off of miniatures you're stripping, shoot me a link in the comments. Give me like an Amazon link or something like that so I can just go buy like this $2 brush or whatever I want to use. I've used toothbrushes in the past, but the problem is a toothbrush, if the chemical agent's really strong, will start to melt. Like the plastic fibers will actually melt on the toothbrush. So using an old toothbrush, it starts to like gum up really fast or it just gets full of um, bits of paint and it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to work anymore. So I gotta find something that's not too too rough. Because if you get a metal brush, you might damage the miniatures. There we go. Arms. But it's got some heft to it, so I can get all that paint off these and I can build a second battle sister squad. Just so I have like a thousand ones. I'm gonna play a game with them. 
I should probably pick up a Celestine too. Owen has a Celestine that he's been using since the beginning of 8th, but he loves that thing. It's not really, I don't think it's going to be as good in a guard army anymore though. We'll see. We'll see how it does. Because they've errated all the various interactions between the guard and uh, Celestine to not have 2 plus save ogres or ogrens or whatever. Don't know 2 plus involve ogrens. I'm pretty sure anymore. Alright, that's done. And we built the second style. So that I don't just have pieces floating around because I'm an idiot and can't look at numbers correctly, apparently. <laughs> I like that she's she's got a lot of really cool dynamism too, because she's taking like a step forward into her gun. She looks like she's she's kind of like charging forward while firing. Whereas the other one's kind of like leaning back into the into the bolter while it shoots. That is the amazing thing about miniatures these days. That there's two there's two things about miniature sculpting right now. One that I'm not impressed about. I have no idea who sculpted a miniature anymore. That's something that like it's like a it's like a lost part of miniature gaming, where I can look at miniatures from the '90s and the early 2000s, and I can tell you who sculpted them just by looking at them. Don't have to see a name. I can just by the style I can tell. It with digital sculpting, I have no idea anymore. So she's she's kind of like leaning back into her gun, like firing from the hip. It's pretty cool. But yeah, these days with digital sculpting, I have no idea who sculpted anything. Like I just have there's I have zero. They all look the same because they're all being done with like digital maquettes and stuff from like pre pre-generated stuff. All right, Seraphim Squad. This is like the Seraphim Superior. Let's do her. She's 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 17, 18. So basically 112 through 118. Oh no, and she'll be on A. That's right, because she's not a squatty. On A. 112 through 118. Oh, there's 112. I am excited about the Seraphim, but I'm also really excited about the new Zephyrm as well. The new units are pretty, I'm pretty hyped for, because they sound cool. I like the idea of Fighty Sisters. Uh, 115, 14, 15, 16, 17. 114 looks like it's a leg. 114. Oh, there's 18, there's her head. Where are you, 114? There's 115, which is her pistol. And I'm finding everything else except for the leg. 115, oh, there's 114. And then it's just her backpack, which is 117. I'm pretty sure that's it. It looks like the legs for the surfer are on here. Oh no, that's her pinches. That's one seven. That's uh, her pinches legs. Or maybe even our flagellant legs. Oh, and the power sword on. I missed one. Pissed power sword arms right there, 116. Now let's get you built. So look like, again, it's front and back of the body, then legs, and then the stupidest flying stand on earth. I hate these flying stands. Why, when everything else is done so well, these flying stands are just so garbage? Because they're cast in a plastic that doesn't bond well with polystyrene cement. And there's never like a make sense contact point. There's like a little loopy thing to put them on. They are they are the worst flying stands. I hate them. Even with this to me a uh, even model master, nothing really melts this hard clear plastic the same way that it melts this softer styrene plastic and so you don't get a good bond. They break all the time. I don't know why. The the, the inceptors had a perfectly good like ball joint mount system built into them. I don't understand why they changed like the suppressors were like this too. They changed to this stupid little scoopy thing. That just doesn't work. It's just not good. Like, I have a I have a real hard time with this. <laughs> it's not a good flight stand. I'm gonna glue it to the backpack first. I'm gonna dry ferment to see if I can get something like a an okay build out of it. <sighs> it's awful. No, you know I'm not even gonna glue it on. I'm just gonna leave it because I'm I'm already mad just looking at it. <laughs> I'm already mad because I hate these flying stands. <laughs> it's funny, people, I pick on little things sometimes with miniature kits and with miniature companies. Um, and people have, people have made comments about it actually, how, I, how I'm very critical of some companies and I focus on like what seem like really little things. But to me, I think it's important to be more critical of little things 
with a triple A business as opposed to like an indie business. So like with an indie business, I, I can forgive a lot when it's one person making something. So things like, just like quality control even in like spelling or grammar or like the way the way rules are laid out. Uh, if if I really like the kind of like the heart and the soul behind a product, I'm, I'm not gonna mention the little things that might be like unpolished basically um, because I, I recognize that as being a, a, a different sort of like like single A ball team, you know what I mean, or, or double A ball team. And when I say AAA products, Games Workshop is a AAA publisher. They have the money, the studio, the personnel, and the resources and, and technology to do almost anything. And so a little thing like that ball joint on the, on the, the whatchamacallits, the, um, the flight stands versus what they've got now, this little like U-shaped flight stand. I, to me, that's like, that should just be common sense. Like, why are you still using this? You've probably gotten customer feedback, you know, saying that they hate it. Um, I get there's like a long lead time and development cycle, but like, just just change it. Like, just don't use it anymore. It's a, it's a bad system. You, you, don't, you don't get to have misses when you're AAA, right? Like when you're AAA, you're playing at a different level. You, you're, I, I, expect, I expect more basically from, um, from AAA publishers versus single A publisher. And the same video games, like you see that from video games as well. Like pe people are very critical of AAA games. And I think rightly so, because when you're dumping tons of money and resources and time into something, it should be more perfect than if you don't have those resources. Um, I said that about a few other things too. There's something else I mentioned where, where I was like, pe people said I was nitpicking, but I, I think it's the same the same logic. Um, oh, the, uh, the starter set for Aeronautic Imperialis. Where just it, I'm, I, when you compare it to another starter set by the same company, like if you compare the Aeronautic starter set to the starter set for um, for Warcry, they're like apples and oranges. Like one's like a complete game experience. The other one is this like is this like kind of start like almost like a demo set. And it would be okay if the demo set was from a from a smaller company. Like I'm okay with like the amount of stuff you get, for instance, in like Riot Quest. Right, or the amount of stuff you get in um, Monster Apocalypse, because those are designed to be like starter demo sets, where you know I, I think it's okay to have a poster mat or whatever, and the price point is comparable. Like you're talking about like a sixty dollar box, but when you get basically what you get in like the Riot Quest starter set in a GW product, it's it sticks out more because it's not it's not what you expect from a AAA publisher. It's just not the same. You're not playing in basically in the same league, and so I think you, you should be a little more critical about those things. This is my rant about AAA versus AA, and especially those goddamn flying stands. They're just, they are hot garbage. <laughs> my suppressors, my suppressors break more often than not because of it. And I'm gonna leave this as superior off. I'm not gonna put her on the flight stand because they'll paint her separately and the flight stand can stay clear that way. When she's finally done, I probably should put this leg on first, but I'm gonna do the, do this thing second. So it's like that in between. And we'll give her a minute to dry before I show it to you because I'm literally picking her up by the leg. So I don't want to fuss with her too much lest she move around. Let her dry. I'm not going to do any more Seraphim just because we're going kind of long now and I want to get to the other units. Uh, let's jump right to the Repentia Superior and one of the Repentias. Yeah, we'll do the A Repentia and uh, the, whatchamacallit, the Neuralizer Whip Lady. 82, 83, 84 for her body. Still on A-frame here. Uh, there's 82. This was always one of my favorite miniatures from the Witch Hunter release, because this was a sister's unit that didn't exist in the second edition codex, but existed, was added basically in, I think, 2004 with the Witch Hunter's codex. And I always like the story behind the Repentia. They're a little bit cheesecake, but like, I like the idea that not all palaces, the palaces aren't always perfect, right? Like they don't, um, they don't always make good choices. They don't always follow the Imperial Creed. And so like that the fallen ones basically have to like sell themselves um, uh, to be forgiven. You know what I mean? Like they have to like do, do crazy acts of like heroism or like repentance basically to like get back either in the good books or, um, you know, just die as martyrs basically. It was just a cool, it, it adds a little more, more story to the, the whole faction. And I'm looking for 85, 86 for the, Backpack. That's who the flaming backpack belongs to. Is this uh, Repentia Superior? Uh, I'm gonna name my Repentia. Oh, what was, what was the name of the ant for or the auntie from um, the Handmaid's Tale? Oh, jeez. That's what, that's what we'll call her. She's she's in the new Handmaid's Tale book too. Um, the new uh, the new Margaret Atwood's novel, the sequel to the Handmaid's Tale, whose name I've completely just blanked on. I was just reading it last week. I totally blanked on it. Uh, 
that's nice. Okay, so like I was worried about these whip bits, but you'll see here the first whip bit is actually like, it's molded to the cape here, so it doesn't have the same like possibility of breaking. This one, on the other hand, oh my God, it's it's like way up in the air. It's a super cool like detail. I am not convinced it will survive for very long. It is a big, a big thin piece of plastic just waving in the air. We'll see how it goes. And the legs here. Oh, what's her name? Auntie. Uh, it's like uh, the new book, The Testaments, is The Testaments. I literally just said it out loud. Like when I forget something and then I forget that I'm trying to remember it and just say it. Um, the uh, the Testaments, she's like a main character. She's kind of like her story of like her youth and stuff is part of the... Aunt Lydia is part of the, the plot line for the, the sequel to the book. And actually has kind of a 40K vibe to it because it's about how even all great empires you know, built on like z zealotism and stuff like that will eventually fall apart, which is a kind of a lesson, the lesson of the Imperium too, right? That if you build something on, on like an insane premise, eventually it falls apart. Someone, someone asked, someone uh, mentioned in the comments actually of the review video that they wanted me to do a 40K drunk history because they like my, they like my rendition of the Age of Apostasy, my TLDR version of the Age of Apostasy. <laughs> Go Jan virus, causes a bunch of shit, starts, starts wrecking things up. And Sebastian throws us to go and like get him down. And I won't, I won't lie, we've, we've actually talked about doing a 40k drunk history before, and actually a Warhammer Fantasy drunk history too, because we thought it would just be fun to do. And we're a lot of us are are fans of the background first and foremost. I think it'd be fun to do like a, just pick like a, a, a setting basically and do like a, a drunk history of it. I could do like the Nemesis Crown, <laughs> a Storm of Chaos, like a bunch of like different sort of like iconic battles or whatever. First War for Armageddon, Second War for Armageddon. Do a drunk history of them. All right, so that's all done. There's the body finished, which will attach to the legs here. Oh, it's weird. So like the back of the leg and the front of the leg are separate bits here. So like the, the, knee, the, shit, the thigh plate and the shin plate go on over top of that, which is interesting. It always weirds me out when things are sectioned so oddly because of the way these things are done digitally now. It's not a way that would make sense. And then this front piece is on here. Put a little in for the head. Yeah, she's awesome. She's mad looking. She's got like a she's got like a super angry face on, whipping their punches to go like pay for whatever transgression they did, not making their beds properly, whatever whatever it is that the battle sisters get mad about, <laughs> not shining their boots. Yeah, that's a crazy whip. It's cool though. I like, oh, it makes me so happy. They add the detail. So like her helmet is actually on her hip here. I really like it when they do that, when they add on um, a little thing like that. Like, you know, her helmet's not just missing. It's just not being used right now and it's sitting there. It always bothers me when you see like a Space Marine Sergeant or something that doesn't have that, doesn't have the helmet on the hip. And I always make a point. I actually, I did that with all of my Space Marine heroes. My Space Marine Heroes won the, the Power Armor Squad was they came with a helmeted and unhelmeted option. I used all the unhelmeted options, but then I shaved down the helmets and put them on their hips and stuff as if they weren't wearing them, but they still had them. Because it bothers me that they, when you see a Space Marine not carrying their helmet, like it's okay their helmet's off, it's stupid, but it's okay. Because there might be a moment where they're caught fighting without their helmet on, but the helmet should still be nearby somewhere. It should be around. All right, there she is, charging Bolter's sister. Pretty super sweet. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into the Repentia. So 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. And it looks like we got a leg, a body, a head, and then the arm. But it's only, only about five pieces here, which isn't too bad. So there's 73. Yeah, these legs were the... Let's see, you get two of these. They're identical on this one frame, uh, except you have Oh no, they're, they're different actually. They just share that one leg. No, it's different even, 73 and 78. It just looks like it's almost identically sculpted. Yeah, two different ones on here and then two, uh, two of the same ones on the B frames. So 72, 73, I got 73 already, where's 72? There's the body right there. Seventy four, which is the head. 79, 74. Oh, that's cool. She's the blind one. Oh, that's super cool. She has like a locked like metal blind circle around her head, which is pretty cool. 
She's doing the Zadoishi, the blind swordsman, except with an enormous chainsaw as opposed to a katana. Oh, it's a bit. I'm gonna take that off that way. It's got these big. It's got these big fleur de lis on. I was afraid to put the clippers in there without breaking them. And then 76 for the alternate arm. Where are you, 76? 76. Oh, this is. It's getting hard now because there's like almost no pieces left. 79 is one of the loose arms, so it's about that big. And I'm totally not seeing it. 76, 79. Not 70 miles an arco flagellant, I think. Oh, you're being obnoxious. Where are you? Did I get it already? No, it's the leg. The head. 79. It's 76 for sure. I cannot see it. There's probably somebody that's seeing it on the screen right now just like shouting at me. But I can't hear you because you're on the internet and also in the future. 76. I don't see it at all. I see 78. I see 79. I see 71. This is this is this is killing me. It has to be here somewhere. I didn't already clip it off, I don't think. No, that's a chainsaw, a head, and a leg. 76. Come on, you're here somewhere. It's still an A piece, right? Yeah, it's still A76. And these ones are on 28 mil bases. Oh, they're on the weird war cry size bases. Well, that's good to know. 76, 76, 76, 71, 77. Like, you'd think 76 is around here somewhere. 79. The rest of this is like all the pennant engine. Why oh, can't I see this? I can't even see the number anywhere. 72, 73, 75. Womp womp. It's got to be 79. Actually, I think it has to be 79 because 80 has two arms on it. Oh, it's a misprint. Okay. Oh, geez. Jesus Christ. All right, fine. <laughs> so it's not 76. It's 79. It has to be because 80 has two arms. All right, we're going for it. We're taking it off. And if I'm wrong... I don't think there's anybody else this could go on because I think the arcoflagellants are actually on the other frames or on B, except for this one. Who both his arms are here, 71 and 70. No, this has to be it. Okay, that's misnumbered. Good catch. There we go. Shut up, everybody. Uh, A76 does not exist. It's A79 on the frame. They've either made that upside down, they've like printed the number upside down, or just like reversed it, or it's been entered wrong. Because. I was either losing my mind or it didn't exist. But yeah, no, I just noticed that 80 has both arms on it. So there is another loose arm. Well, or at least, I really hope not, because I just clipped it off. And it's going on regardless. Okay. 28 mil, 25 mil. So these are on 28 mil because, and I don't know why, <laughs> because randomly different base sizes please the Games Workshop. Uh, uh, there we are. There's all four of them. Well, we did get enough at least. They're all hiding inside 32 mil bases. You are appropriately scraped off, except for this. Let's clean the leg. I'm just going to do these as I go, actually, with glue, just because this is one of those miniatures that's sitting on one foot. And if I do these as I clean them, she's wearing like a slipper. That's cool. Uh, this will dry as I go, which will be better. This is eventually just sitting on one foot. And what is she wearing? She's wearing kind of like a like a bodysuit. It looks like with like this imagines what's underneath. The, actually, they have like power armor plugs. I'm noticing now on their legs. There's like a power armor plug there, power armor plug there. So they are plugged into their power armor. They have power armor plugs in their spines too. Interesting. Yeah, this is like whatever they're wearing under their power armor. Basically, it's like they haven't even been allowed to like. They've just like they've just been like stripped of their armor basically and like sent out with a chainsaw. That's really interesting. I don't know why they have power armor plugs. I guess they would have to. In the old background and lore though, they didn't merge with like one of the reasons why their toughness is lower than the Space Marines, even though they're both wearing power armor. Uh, and besides the fact they're not gene enhanced, is that they're they weren't um, they weren't wearing the same kind of power armor. They're wearing the kind of, the kind of power armor that humans can wear. Where it like it's just it's kind of like it's it's reacting to your emotion as opposed to melding with your nervous system. But I guess now they're actually like plugged into it, which is interesting. 
I mean, it's a small thing. It's just like it, it's like just previously established, sort of like here's facts about the Battle Sisters and their power armor that that kind of contradicts. But also, I mean, it doesn't really change anything because it's just a little plug on a model, and maybe it means absolutely nothing. And I'm just reading into it. But that's just me being Mr. Old 40K. Uh, clean these off. Mm, nice and clean, actually. Not not too much to clean off there. Not even like really a bad mold line. Just the, really where the, the injection points were. And then we'll put some glue on this hand. It's kind of a small contact point. I really like these repension models, mostly because of the previous metal ones. They were sculpted by someone that wasn't just Goodwin, which isn't a bad thing, but they were not quite in the same scale. They were a bit, bit chunkier than the, um, like just like design-wise, they were a bit like chunkier, um, more heroic scaly than the, the Battle Sisters were, because they were Jez and they were sort of like to his scale, and then the newer ones were a bit more painter friendly, like a bit bigger overall. Um, but just like their their hands and their, their weapons and stuff were really big. But this one looks like it could fit inside a suit of power armor. Oh, it's a cool miniature. Yeah, she's like running and like swinging her sword in the air. That is a really cool miniature. I really like these repunches. Really, really cool. All right, let's let you drive for a minute. You can hang it with Taskmaster Lady. And Lady Seraphim will give you a look at. She's all dry now. Looking pretty cool. Very angelic. And I love this miniature. This is an awesome model. A really nice model. Again, fiddly because of the, the, the whatchamacallit, the whip and stuff. But I'm not super sure the whip is going to be, you know, on there forever. But well, if we take care of it and maybe magnetize the bases, <laughs> put on a magnetic tray, it'll be okay. Uh, let's jump over and we'll do an Arcoflagellant and then the pendant engine. And we'll call this done. We'll do whichever arc of Vigilance on A, and we'll try and finish the A-frame off here. I think there's going to be one, one um, repentia left on here. So it looks like we're doing 69, 70, 71. And that's it. 69, 70, and 71. Oh, there's two different guys, and some of the different stuff comes in the other frame, it looks like. So 69, 70, 71 is all that we need for this first one, and that's what's on A. Mm -hmm. And then what is A77 going on to? I don't know. 69, 70, and 71. Oh no, that's a Repentia. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm building another Repentia now. I clipped the body off. 71. <laughs> and then it's 69, 70 right here. Now I love that his arms are taken off and he's just got like crazy, like, like wacky, wacky inflatable arm man arms. But with murdering. Yeah, we'll just finish up this A-frame and call it done, because these are all kind of the unique miniatures. Yeah, it's just three pieces. That's okay. We didn't add that much time. It's just three pieces for this psychotic criminal that's been brainwashed and turned into a killing machine. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this. I hope all this stuff gets in the kill team. I, really, I mean, the pen engine won't. It might be an elite, though. That would be kind of cool, actually, the pennant engine was an elite, and we just kind of like run them out, because its stats aren't that much more than some of the elites. It would be like a big elite, but whatever. But I really hope the Arcoflagellants, the, um, the, whatchamacallit, it's the uh, Repentia and the Battle Sisters, and maybe like the Celestians and stuff, and Seraphim all make it in. Oh, there's not a lot of jump pack troops in Kill Team, for good reason, because they just ignore the terrain. <laughs> And the train's kind of a big part of Kill Team. And I like the all the little dog tags. This is 7351. Oh my god, he's he looks like he's in Jamie Lee Curtis's virus. He's got all kinds of like tubes hanging out of him and he is having a bad this was a bad end. Whatever you did, buddy, you're paying for it. Mm, oops. And then it's just another arm piece. This little arm piece 71 goes in and it goes down. Oh, these are cool miniatures. Might be time to do some 28 millimeter Inquisitor. <laughs> this would be a cool thing to have. Do some 28 millimeter Inquisitor and have them have, do like an outlaw gang, do like a bunch of like outlaw radicals, and they have to like make the sisters the bad guys. Well, the bad guys. They'll be the antagonists. We're trying to steal like holy relics from them. 
have like a Harusian trying to steal like ancient earth relics and the sister trying to stop them. Wow, this is an awesome model because it's like, it's just dashing. That's on 25s. Like there's like a pile of bricks under its feet, but it's like literally in the air. It's like, it's like flying through the air with its run. Because its kill word has been activated. That's super cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Just like, just running forward as fast as it can. Like, b both feet off the ground, actually, even, because it's like, it's, it's just on that piece of brick. That's a really nice miniature. All right, we'll do the last for Pencha, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I mean, it finishes frame A, which is nice. It means when I come back through the rest of these, it's not, there's just like the two frames I left to do. Uh, I was looking for 77, 79, 80, and 81, because it's got this little tail of stuff. And then we'll do Dr. Mr. The Pennant Engine. Don't call me Mr. Pennant Engine. Mr. Pennant Engine was my father. And then 78. 80, and wherever the front of the body is. Um, did I clear it off already? Back of the body, front of the body. Oh, yeah, it's just 79, which is the head, which is right here. Oh, that's a cool head. This is the one with like the half, like half her head was shaved. Looks like she was like, she had like her like battle sister like tonsure and like they shaved half her head off basically. In penitence. <laughs> I do like it, like that's again, this is the thing that makes these models have character for me is when all, every head is different and they all kind of tell a little bit of story. Like even just having the plugs in the legs here, like there's the plugs in the legs and the plugs in the back, which makes it look like, oh geez, I bent that. Whoops. Makes it look like there's a bit more story on how they're like interfacing with their power armor. That's that's good model design. When little bits and details kind of tell you something about the world or the background of the universe, that's good model design. It's 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 very easy to like phone in little details like that, but because they took the time to add them. It shows, like that's, to me that's AAA model design. Like if, if you're adding small details that make the miniature not just another pog basically fighting in your little war game, but actually make it a, a character with a story and a universe and like you, you, you start looking, when you look at it you ask questions about like, oh what happened to her or what happened to, you know, like this person, like why are they the way they are, why is her head half shaved, like <clears throat> that's, what, that's what model design should be. I'm sure that's what uh, when Jess Gooden's teaching teaching lessons to these young sculptors now about like concepting and how to make a miniature. Like those are big those are big check marks basically for when stuff goes to yes this goes to production no this doesn't go to production. Um, a great example of that is things like the the nurglings on Mephist or uh, Mortarian's base, right? There's that awesome there's that one awesome nurgling with his hands on his hips and the helmet. It just looks like he's in charge of all the other nurglings when they go back to Nurgle Town and he's just like he's bossing around the nurglings telling them what to do. And he's got the cool chaos warrior helmet. That's why. It's stuff like that. Like that's 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 where you're 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 differentiating yourself as a as a AAA designer, basically. And that's why the best you should expect is the worst you ever seen somebody do. Or sorry, the best, the least you should expect is the best you ever see somebody do. Because at that point, if you set yourself, if you set a standard, then you got to maintain that standard. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I like that she's had like half her head shaved. I like that she has all the same like, this is this is how I used to interface my power armor and now, you know, I've been stripped to my power armor or whatever. Mm, it's all cleaned. This is 80. I think between the Arco Flagellants and the Repentias, these are my favorite miniatures probably in this box. We'll see how I feel about the, the Pennant Engine, but these definitely have the most story to them. And that's when I'm painting them, that's what makes me want to paint a miniature, is when it tells a story. That's why I loved um, all the old Juan Diaz uh, chaos miniatures, like the Demon Prince of Nurgle and the um, the old Juan Diaz Slanesh Champions and stuff like that. Those are just, they, they tell a story. They've got like a cool like narrative to them just by looking at them. Okay, that's all done. See if we can get you to go on a base and stay. This chain's being a punk though, because obviously it's a tiny contact point. I need to give it some pressure to actually make it stay. Put you on here, find another weird 28 mil base, <laughs> because that's apparently how we do now. 
and you're gonna go towards the back there yeah and put a little pressure on that oh you're being obnoxious you're being obnoxious because you're front heavy but that's okay you're still probably my probably my favorite miniature my third favorite miniature second favorite miniature maybe favorite miniature in this box because you're very very cool maybe the, i actually really like the other one too with the blind the blind mask and i like that there's actual bricks sticking out of the rubble here too all right that should have done it oh did i mess up the belt no it's okay let that try and we're on to the pennant engine we're home stretch here home stretch of building at least one of all the different stuffs all right so there's two pages of pennant engine oh dear god 55 56 57 and this looks like the body and just like the engine bit on the back. Oh, it wants me to kind of crank it through. Okay, I see that. 57. And then 55, 56. Yeah, it's the two halves of the body right here. And hopefully this, they've, they've done something to kind of cover up whether or not there's a giant line going through the middle of this because they have sectioned this body in half, basically. What does this remind me of? Oh, um, the bad guy thing from Darkwood, I think it was called, that video game, what made me play? <laughs> you know, like you wake up in like a house in Eastern Europe and someone's trying to murder you. You have to make like weird red goo to level up. Kind of looks like the bad guy from that that chases you through the forest. That was a weird game. All right. Clean this off. Yeah, this is this is significantly smaller already just from like the body size. From the metal one. The original metal one. Oh, there's a bit in here. It's got to get cleaned out. Let's use the clippers. Let's be smart, Ash. Let's not like give ourselves a new scar on camera in front of everybody. Put that piece out. I can clean with the mold lines and mold lines. Oh, geez. Bit of mold line of flames there. Man, if you had this much fire coming out of your exhaust ports, there is something wrong with your vehicle. And then just a whole bunch of drugs because they're just hopping up this criminal on PCP or heretic, I guess, on PCP and strap him into a giant robot kilomajig and send him into the fight. And then when it's time to trigger the go time, this, this all just deplunges, I guess. <laughs> and I imagine, because there's two sets here, I imagine the first set, like maybe like the top set is like the murder drugs and the bottom set's the sedatives to like shut them down afterwards. So he doesn't just go rampaging through all the civilians later on. The green chemicals make him go. The red chemicals make him stop. So please don't shoot him in the red chemicals, because if you shoot him in the red chemicals, he's just going to go until everything around him's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Rereading the attacks for these. Oh my god. They're so horrifyingly stabby. Hello. I'm going to make 15 attacks with my, my murder flails. Uh, I think that's just about it. Did I catch the legs on that guy? I did. So these two go together, left and right. And we'll do this before I start cleaning the next piece. Yep, left and right, through there, put that together, and then it wants me to kind of tip it through. That's not bad, actually. Yeah, it's just this, like, seam on the chest and the head that would have any kind of mold line on it. It doesn't look like it's too bad. And then it wants me to put this over the legs like this, and then fold it in like that, and it looks like that's where I'm going to glue it is across here. So I'll put a little glue in there, a little glue in there. And then it just rotates on like that. Nice. All right. Yeah, it's, that's super small by comparison. We'll see how big the legs and stuff are, but I don't think it's going to be much. I mean, it's only on a 50 this time, which is way smaller. Like, way, way smaller than the original. It's super duper small. Uh, and then 58 goes over top. Actually, at this point, I can just clip out the rest of these pieces because there's nothing on A that's not this pen engine now. So. I don't even have to look at part numbers. I can just start clipping. I mean, I shouldn't, because <laughs> I don't have to figure out what's left and right now. But whatever, reading the instructions, that's for suckers. That just slows things down. Don't listen to Ash, never listen to Ash. 
get the rest of this cleaned. There we go. And this poor dude's hands all chained up. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all. Vent on that chain right there. Being careful not to accidentally clip off this guy's fingers with my side cutters. That's coming out. Because these fingers are really small. And that's the kind of thing that you could accidentally clip off or shave off while you're cleaning mold lines. So be very careful with that piece with the hands. And that comes out. And then it's his leggies. Going in there. Oh, jeez. That bit is not being particularly come hither. I might have to just bend that off. Yeah, we'll just do it that way. There we go. Get the other one. Oh, come on. I understand saving space on the frame by having your connection points be tight, but I have been noticing there's a lot of, with some of the amount of pieces on these frames in the future, they're just, they're not leaving a lot of space for side cutters to get into. And these are not, these are not any bigger than modern side cutters. I mean, these side cutters are probably 20 years old or close to it, but the ends are identical to any of the side cutters you buy today. And that's the piece I'm looking forward to do next. Sweet, that's everything on that frame. So it's asked me that front plate next, so let's clean that off. I do like, this does look a little more like it works, I guess, than the original one, than the metal one. Like I can kind of see like the mechanisms of how it works, like popping them full of drugs. And you know, all the stuff's just keeping them alive. And that goes on the front over top like this. You do want to follow the instructions on this one though, because if you freestyled it, the way these pieces go together, you might have a, a bad time getting it to go. And then, all right, let's clean this piece without shaving off any fingers, Ash. This is a, a delicate bit here. And unfortunately, there's literally an injection point on this manacle right next to his thumb that I could, if I just push a little bit too hard, that thumb's coming off. I mean, not like the Battle Sisters wouldn't maybe cut this guy's thumbs off anyway. This is like a form of pre-punishment. Pre That's all done. All right, let's get some glue in there. And yeah, see, so this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how you, how you hide, like the fact there's a seam all the way through this guy. You make a front bit to sit on top. You can see, no, there's not even the slightest bit of line there going through him now. Uh, and then 60, which is this little guy right here. Going on the bottom. And this hangs out right there and that closes off this loop basically where we put that original figure in oh is that a, is that a casting piece did i miss something there's a piece of flash nope that's a bit of casting i didn't get off an injection point i didn't clean off and then it's the legs and the toes so 65 and 66 cleaning off all these legs and the other half of the feet and again, I'm not looking at numbers, but it doesn't really matter because it's just going to go left and right anyway. And these legs are significantly smaller than the original ones. I like this. this is the Battle Scissors version of a Dreadnought, right? Like, so Space Marine Dreadnought, you take a hero, you throw him in this, like, honored war sarcophagus that'll keep him alive for thousands of years. The Minister Arm's like, no, 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 that's not how we do. We're going to find some criminals and some heretics that don't believe in our stuff. We're going to pump a full of angel dust. <laughs> And let them go redeem themselves in the eyes of the emperor. That's really what everybody should be doing. <laughs> why, why, are we, why are we making space marines? We just make more of these suits and stick all the malcontents in them and have our fight our wars for us. Come on, Imperium. Get darker. How can you not be dark enough? If I can think of this plan, and I'm a relatively normal sociopath, then you crazy 40k millennium sociopaths should be able to do way better than this. Let's get all these mold lines off. Scrape the back here. Again, I would go gentle on this because this is there's some there's some filigree and like some little like spikes and stuff on this. You could very easily shave off by accident. Like that bit being an injection point is kind of obnoxious. There's like a curly cue on the end here, but the injection point came to the end of it, and it's like, no, <laughs> like, why would you, why would you do that? Why would you make an injection point on one of the most brittle pieces of the miniature. That doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, and then these are nice and fitted, so these leggies are going to go on. And is it running? I think it kind of is running. Oh, I threw some extra glue in there by accident. That's okay. And can I pose this at all? No, it's square pegged. It's square pegged on the inside, so it's kind of like self-pinning, but it means that you can't really rotate the legs. You can just chop them off. If you want to rotate the legs and repose this, you totally can. Just chop it off, but it's been pegged so you don't have to. And then this goes down, and we build his guns. And Robert is your father's brother, as they say in the north. That's going to go down there. And let's just throw these together. It's just heavy flammers and... Murder saws. Oh, they didn't get the flails. The flails are the best. We get the heavy flamers and the kill saws. We want the crazy flails. The crazy 50 attack per model flails. Everyone should have all the time. But that's okay. We'll settle for we'll settle for kill saws for now. Until we can change them over to flails. Because the flail seems like the way to go. <laughs> Hello, this is my squad of dudes. There's five of them. They have 75 attacks and strength five minus one. Because that seems perfect. And we can make them reroll somehow too, probably. Actually, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be able to get the cannonists reroll because they're not Soritas. They're just Ministorm, I think. Weird constructy dudes. There's gotta be someone who gives them rerolls. Maybe the priests give them rerolls. I'm sure there is, I can't remember. Off the top of my head. I'm not looking at it, not having it in front of me. And that's it. Clean off the back of this. And we're looking pretty close to done. Get these arms stuck on. Oh, geez, that's so flimsy. Once again, having like a mold line where all these little spikes and stuff are just makes cleaning it hard because we take up too much material. You are ruining it. Uh. Maybe dry fit that ash and figure out where it goes. Oh, it's the back of the arms, that's why. It goes on like that. And then into there, so this is the wrong one. This one goes here, yes it do. All right, so a bit of glue on the back of the arm. And little divots for the hoses, and that's heavy flamer number one. Yeah, this is so much smaller than the old ones. And then heavy flamer number two. Much the same thing. Bit of glue on there. Little divots for the tanks. And then clamp that out of there. And then just put these suckers on. And again, they're square pegged. You can see there's a rectangular peg. But you could easily shave that off and repose it if you get a second one of these. And you want to make them different. It shouldn't be too hard. I do like this guy though. He's pretty cool. He's, he's definitely in keeping with the Imperium. He is a freaky, freaky device where we've built like a weird murder robot and put our drug crazed criminal into it and made it go kill our enemies. Uh, and it's just these I wanted to show off actually. This is the Arcoflagellant and then this other sister. He's really cool. I like the Arcoflagellant a lot for being three pieces. It's a lot of, a lot of movement for a miniature like that. And there we go, all through frame A. Did, did one of each from frame B basically, except for one of the Seraphim. Um, but I didn't want this to go forever, and this has already gone pretty long. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was fun, uh, putting those together, chatting about um, just the hype of sisters and how this review process has been, and um, sort of, uh, I guess, how they go together and stuff too, which is cool. So, we'll see if more of these let's make in the future. Um, I'm probably gonna be working on these for my kill team coming up pretty soon. Uh, I don't know when the rules file will come out, but as soon as it does, I'll feature them. And if I can get like a baton, like a thousand points of them painted, we'll see how this, how, if I enjoy painting this stuff up now, uh, and then going through my bits box and finding more metal sisters to add to them to make it a thousand points. We'll play a game before the game with them too. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Play the mash. Have a me. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathrite Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, 
puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.